Hyperthyroidism is a condition where the thyroid gland produces too much thyroid hormone, either because of increased synthesis and secretion or just increased secretion. Now, this lesson will focus on the basic mechanisms that lead to hyperthyroidism. We'll talk about the symptoms of hyperthyroidism and basic treatment options in another lesson. Now, there are two basic causes of hyperthyroidism. The most common cause has nothing to do with the thyroid stimulating hormone. These causes include Graves' disease, thyroiditis, and nodular goiter, while the more rare forms of hyperthyroidism are due to overstimulation by TSH and similar hormones. Graves' disease is an autoimmune disorder, and hyperthyroidism is the most common feature. Graves' disease is caused by antibodies against the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor, which bind the receptor and lead to the constitutive synthesis and release of T3 and T4. It begins when thyroid-specific antigens activate CD4-positive T helper cells, which in turn stimulate B lymphocytes to produce antibodies against the thyroid-stimulating hormone receptor. In addition, antibodies against the thyroglobulin and thyroid peroxidase are often seen in patients with Graves' disease, but they're not specific to Graves' disease which is an important thing to remember. Also, the constitutive synthesis of T3 and T4 leads to follicular cell hyperplasia, the formation of intracellular colloid droplets, cell scalloping, which is characterized as a bulging of the follicular cell membrane, and reduced colloid space, all of which contribute towards the enlargement of the thyroid gland, which is often referred to as a goiter. Thyroiditis is another cause of hyperthyroidism. It's characterized by inflammation of the thyroid gland and it falls into two main categories, with pain and tenderness and without pain and tenderness. Thyroiditis associated with pain and tenderness includes subacute, infectious, radiation, and palpation thyroiditis. Now, subacute thyroiditis is typically caused by a viral infection or post-viral inflammation. It damages follicular cells and leads to the unregulated release of T4 and T3. It does not lead to an increase in the synthesis of T3 or T4. It's usually temporary, lasting two to six weeks, and is followed by hypothyroidism. Now, diagnosis of subacute thyroiditis can be confirmed by the appearance of multinucleated giant cell granulomas in a thyroid gland biopsy. Now, infectious thyroiditis is caused by gram-positive or negative organisms like staphylococcus or streptococcus and is typically seen in the immunocompromised patient. The acute form presents with the sudden onset of unilateral pain of the thyroid gland and fever. Also, diagnosis of infectious thyroiditis can be confirmed by the appearance of gram-positive or negative cells in a culture from the thyroid gland biopsy. Now, radiation thyroiditis is occasionally seen in patients with Graves' disease who are undergoing radiation treatment which damages the follicular cells and leads to increased release of T3 and T4. Likewise, trauma, neck surgery, or even excessive palpation of the thyroid gland can cause palpation or trauma-induced thyroiditis. Now, thyroiditis without pain and tenderness includes painless, postpartum, drug-induced, and fibrous thyroiditis. Now, painless thyroiditis accounts for less than 5% of cases of hyperthyroidism and is thought to be a form of chronic autoimmune thyroiditis caused by antibodies produced primarily against the thyroglobulin and or thyroid peroxidase. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is a common cause of painless thyroiditis and is associated with mild hyperthyroidism. Now, postpartum thyroiditis is similar and typically occurs in women within one year of giving birth, but it's associated with higher serum levels of the antithyroid antibodies compared to painless or Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Drug-induced thyroiditis can result from the administration of interferon alpha, interleukin-2, the antiarrhythmic amiodarone, lithium, and kinase inhibitors. 
How these drugs cause hyperthyroidism is not completely understood. However, it is clear that patients predisposed to hyperthyroidism should be monitored closely during therapy and serum TSH levels must be within normal range before beginning therapy. Fibrous thyroiditis, or Rydell's thyroiditis, is characterized by fibrous, macrophage, or eosinophil infiltration of the thyroid gland and adjacent tissues. It can lead to neck tightness and a hard fixed goiter. Another form of hyperthyroidism is referred to as nodular goiter. It's characterized as any enlargement of the thyroid gland due to multiple nodules or a single nodule. These nodules can result from a benign or cancerous overgrowth of follicular cells, accumulation of thyroid hormone in the colloid space, or simply a fluid-filled cyst within the thyroid gland. Now finally, overstimulation of the thyroid gland can lead to hyperthyroidism, although it's rare. It can be caused by the inappropriate secretion of thyroid stimulating hormone, which could result from a TSH secreting pituitary adenoma, resistance to the feedback inhibition of T3 and T4, or abnormal secretion of thyrotropin releasing hormone. Now, hyperthyroidism caused by a TSH secreting adenoma will result in an increase in the alpha subunit of TSH over the beta subunit while the lack of feedback inhibition will result in equal serum alpha and beta chain levels. Likewise, the release of high levels of human chorionic gonadotropin, or HCG, can lead to overstimulation of the thyroid gland, because HCG is a weak stimulator of the TSH receptor because of its similarity with the TSH alpha subunit. Now, abnormally high levels of HCG are seen in cases of molar pregnancy, choriocarcinoma, and hyperemesis gravidarum, which is characterized by persistent severe vomiting that leads to weight loss and dehydration and is typically seen during pregnancy. In the next lesson, we'll talk about the mechanisms involved in hypothyroidism.